This is Jason the PCMD. You can find my website at jasonthepcmd.blogspot.com where you can watch videos and read blog, blog entries about how to fix computers yourself. Okay, in the previous video we had this computer that had a bad hard drive in it. We ran the Dell Diagnostics and it failed with a 142 error code. So, the next part of this is we're going to get the data off the drive and we're going to put it on a good drive and go from there. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to need a boot CD of some kind. Um, I a lot of times will use one of these. This is a Dell Windows Vista CD or DVD actually. It came with the computer. Uh, we don't have we don't run Vista on these computers, but you can use this as a startup disk. So, first thing we're going to do is turn it on and hit F12 a bunch of times real quick so that it pulls up the startup menu. That way we can put the disk in the drive without it starting yet. We're going to pick the um, boot from CD option here. Okay. And probably because it's so bright you can't see it. I don't think I can even turn the brightness down. Okay, I can play it. You can see CD, DVD, RW drive right there. So that's what we want to select. Hit enter on the keyboard. And so press a key, so we press another key. This will take a few moments. And what we're going to use is a thermal take hard drive uh, thing here. This one can hold two drives. Um, I've actually broken the door right here on here. But normally the front one looks like this and it'll hold the drive straight. I actually use a pack of uh, post-it notes to hold it in place. This one uh, uses, it has an eSATA connector on it, which these Dell laptops that we use have eSATA ports right here. Um, it also has a USB port, so I, a USB cable on it, so I can use that on computers that don't have eSATA ports. So, we're going to plug it into the computer right now, but we're going to leave it off. As you can see, the, that is off. It's plugged in now to the eSATA port, and we're going to wait for it to start up. It's going to take a few minutes to start. I'm going to load a new drive into the reader here. You can see, this is a SATA drive, as you can sort of see here, the connector on the end has two kind of L-shaped plugs, and you just line that up, put it in there. And since I broke the door off of it, I'm going to put my little spacer in there to hold it in place. But we don't want to turn it on just yet, because we want to make sure that the hard drive that it detects as the first drive is the one that's built in, not the one that's plugged in to the laptop. So we'll wait a moment here. Um, in order to do this, you have to use either a Vista disk or a Windows Windows 7 disk. If you try to use an XP disk like this one, it won't work because XP does not boot up into a miniature version of Windows. There's a miniature version of Windows that Vista and Windows 7 used. It's called Windows PE, or Windows Pre-Installation Environment. And what that allows you to do is to do the Windows installation in a completely graphical environment. You don't have to use the keyboard for everything, although you still can, but you can use the mouse and it's a lot easier to use that way. So, this is almost done loading here. And there's a couple different programs that we use, or I use. Uh, one is Ghost by uh, Semantic, and we're actually licensed to use it at, at the company that I'm at. And another one is called Raw Copy. And Raw Copy is useful in situations where Ghost absolutely will not work. Um, if sometimes the drive is too badly damaged, Ghost will fail, and it won't actually continue the copy. So we've got the install screen here. We're not actually installing Vista. We're just using this as a miniature operating system. So we just said English, next, 
And the first thing it'll bring up is this screen here, and it says you want to install. And what we want to click is repair your computer. And it's going to say searching for Windows installations. And if you had a Windows 7 or Windows Vista uh, operating system installed on your computer, it would actually find something here. But we're not, we're not even interested in this portion. We are interested in the command prompt right here. And from that command prompt, we can run programs. So, first of all, what we're going to type here is disk part, D I S K P A R T, disk part. And press enter, and it will open up a window. And we're not going to partition the drives, we're just seeing if they're there. So, we're going to type list disk. List disk, and press enter. So, right now it says disk zero. 75 gigs, zero bytes free, and that's how many bytes the partition takes up, not the full size of the drive. So now we're going to turn on this. So now that we have that as disk zero, turning this on, and we're going to do rescan. I'll say please wait while disk part scans your configuration. And then we're going to type list disk again. And now you see there are two disks, disk 0 and disk 1. And I'm also going to plug in a USB thumb drive because that has the programs I'm going to use on it. So I hope, certainly hope it does. So that's plugged in now, so I'm going to type list disk again. And now it shows the USB thumb drive also. So I'm going to type exit. Okay, so I know that the USB thumb drive is going to be drive E. We're going to go E colon, and then we're going to think I have ghost on here. So D-I-R-G-H star dot star. Uh, I do not have ghost on here. Okay, let me set my phone down for just a moment. Bear with me. Oh, I see my mistake. This drive already had some data on it, so drive E is the external drive. As soon as I started doing anything on the drive, as you'll see here, do a search, the drive starts lighting up. So that's not drive E. We need to go to drive F. All right. Let's try ghost 32. Okay. Now, Nord, uh, semantic ghost used to be called Norton ghost. This is version 8. And the 32-bit version will run in Windows. Now, this is a licensed program. And as you can see here, it says Semantic Ghost Corporate Edition. So, if, in order to use this program legally, you have to have a license from Semantic to use it. I'm going to turn up the brightness slightly here because it's not even showing up very well. So, I'm going to click OK. Now, anytime you're dealing with a drive with bad sectors, you're going to want to go to the options screen here, options, and then you're going to want to go over to the miscellaneous screen here, and you want to make sure this box is checked, force cloning. It says forces cloning to continue even if the source contains bad clusters, because if the, you have bad clusters on the drive, you're going to, a ghost will normally just crash and exit if it finds one. So we're going to click accept. And now we're going to go local disk to disk. And you'll see d three drives here because one's a thumb drive. Now since we ran disk part and we already confirmed that drive zero was the internal drive, the one we want to copy. So that will be our source, the first drive on the list. So we'll say OK. And the second drive will be number two. And we'll say OK. And then it asks if you want to change the size of the partitions, and it will automatically do that in most cases. You just say OK. These drives are the same size, so it doesn't really matter. You say yes, and now the ghosting will start. So we got one partition, it's NTFS, and now you get the speed and the estimated completion time, which you can almost see right there, it says about 35 minutes or so. So you will let this go as long as it takes to finish.
And then when you're done, you will take the hard drive out of the laptop and then put the hard drive in right here. Once you put that drive in, and then it'll start up normally and it'll work fine. Um, some other tips I have when you're dealing with a hard drive that's failing is to delete things off of it that you don't need because that will only make it take longer to copy. Um, you can actually take the page file.sys and the hyper file.sys off the root of the C drive. Um, you can empty, if this is Windows XP, you can empty out the contents of the system volume information folder. Um, if that's, if you're not using system restore or you're, there's nothing in there that you need, you can just do that. As you can see here, it's using the A001 files and things like that. That's from the system volume information folder. So that will, that will actually significantly um, increase the amount of time it takes to run the, um, the ghost procedure. So I'm actually going to cancel the ghost here. Hit control C, and say user, user abort. And since we're going to go, we're going to go to C. We're going to do. So we're, what we're doing now is we're deleting the page file and the hyper file. Those are files that are. Page file is the virtual memory file. If you run out of memory, it puts, it uses that as memory. The hyper file is what it uses when your computer goes to shuts down when the battery's dead, and then you turn it on. It says Windows is restoring. That's the hyper file. So we're going to delete those two. We're going to do a trib minus s minus h h minus r and we're going to h and then tab and it'll say trib minus shr hyperfile.sys and hit enter and then del hyperfile.sys and then gonna hit the up arrow a few times and go back and then we're going to put in the page file here pag and then tab page file that sys and then we're going to up arrow a couple of times and page file that sys okay and then cd sys and then hit tab system volume information and then hit cd again space and then hit tab and tab will automatically fill out that and so now now this is going to be hard for you to see because it's rolling off the line and the cd um, the type uh, del asterisk dot asterisk or star dot star slash s slash q now make sure you're in the system volume information folder when you do this because you're going to empty out data if you do this on the root of the c drive you're going to delete everything off the drive so we're going to hit enter and you can see it's deleting tons of things now one thing I normally do and I didn't do it here and I think I'm actually going to do it is the actual time it takes to draw the stuff on the screen and scrolling up on the screen that actually uh, slows down the deleting of the files because of what it's doing so I'm gonna cancel it real quick and hit control C and I'm gonna hit the up arrow again to repeat the last command and I'm gonna do let me see if you can see this here carrot or greater than sign null. Null just puts it so that you don't see when it's what it's doing. And you'll see the hard drive here is flashing. But this helps it complete a whole lot faster. And when we start the ghost again, instead of saying like 35 to 45 minutes, you'll see that it's going to be a significantly shorter amount of time it's going to take. So we'll give this a moment here to finish. This guy's, this guy's got a lot of stuff in there. Uh, we normally, at the place that I work, we normally have system the system restore feature turned off on the laptops because they're worried about you know viruses being stuck in the system volume information folder and then possibly those viruses getting restored. So you see it just finished again. So we're going to go back to the F drive where we had ghost Ghost, Ghost32.exe, and we're going to basically redo what we did earlier. Click OK. Options. Miscellaneous. Force cloning is enabled. OK. Local disk to disk. From drive one. OK. 
2, drive 2, OK, OK, yes. Now we should see in the statistics here. Uh, now it's estimating about 23 minutes. So we saved a lot of time emptying out those folders. So um, this one's going to take a little while, but once it finishes, just switch the drives out and you're good. This computer's under warranty, so we'll send the other drive off to Dell and we'll get credit for it. So anyway, this is how you get data off the drive. Now I do have another program that I was going to show you. It's called Raw Copy, and it's a free program, so if you don't have access to Ghost, you can use Raw Copy. Now, Raw Copy is only good mainly if the drives are the identical size, the same model drive, because Raw Copy, let's say you have an 80 gig drive in the laptop, and then you put a 250 gig drive in the drive caddy outside the laptop, and then use Raw Copy. Raw Copy, when the computer boots back up, it will think it's an 80 gig drive, because it won't because it copies the drive directly and you'll have a bunch of empty space at the end that you'll have to repartition out. Now you could use a program such as Partition Magic or you might even be able to do it in Linux to resize the partition to fill the whole size of the drive, but Raw Copy is good for that end. Raw Copy will, if you've installed it on a computer, you can just take the executable and you can just put it on your USB thumb drive here and you can run it from within a Windows PE environment like the Windows Vista boot disk that I used. And that's the, when I mean boot disk, it's actually the install disk for Windows Vista. You could also use something like Part PE if you have that, or if you uh, company you work at uses SCCM, Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager, you can boot up off of a SCCM startup disk and use that. You just, uh, on SCCM, in order to get a command prompt, you just have to hit F8. So, anyway, this is Jason the PCMD. You can reach me at jasonthepcmd.blogspot.com. Thanks. Bye.